Under the visionary of Professor Pathak, recently IIT Bombay has got the responsibility of development of edX platform for Indian population. Under this project, team has transferred content from edX to Moodle and also edX to edX to enhance the process of e-learning. Now let's see what this internship has contributed to the edX platform. Please come up guys. A very good morning to all of you. I am here, Anand Solanki, to give a presentation on a modification to EDX. These are my teammates. Uh, this is Kripal Gaurav, this is Pushkar Narayan, this is Rajeshi Sarkar, Harsh Sharma, Divyanshu Goyal, and Grishma Jaina. So let us start with modification of EDX platform. This is the outline. We are going to uh, give the presentation on these topics. Introduction to MOOC, databases, objectives, scope of the project, uh, porting data from EDX to Moodle, problems phase solutions, Introduction to EDX distributed platform for course synchronization, then problems faced on this topic, then solutions. Okay, let us move on. So first, introduction to MOOC. What is MOOC? MOOC stands for Massive Open Online Courses. It aims to provide real-time education online with the help of various features like videos, images, quizzes, and uh, other online exams, etc. Two famous examples of MOOC platforms are EDX and Moodle. Then, introduction to MOOC. EDX. EDX consists of two parts, LMS and CMS. LMS is the learning management system. It is user side of the system where a user can opt and interact with the courses created. Then CMS. It is the instructor side of the system where there is a provision of creating and managing courses. It is also known as EDX Studio in case of EDX. Then Moodle. Moodle doesn't have separate LMS and CMS part but provides login to Moodle as admin and user separately. Then databases. EDX uses two database systems. First is SQLite, relational database. Used to store information about user profile registration data student enrollment, logs, test grading, etc. It has 127 tables. Then MongoDB. It is a second non-relational database used in EDX. It is a NoSQL document-based database. It is used to store course content, course policies, etc. and other course-related information. Then Moodle. Moodle uses MySQL database, which has 314 tables in it. Then Objective. Uh, actually, there are two projects, so there are two objectives. Uh, first is port data from EDX to Moodle. So that whenever course or user related data is content is created in EDX, then it is instantly transferred to Moodle through a trigger. Then the second one is providing a simple interface for course distribution facility for universities uh, participating in MOOC with IITB. Then scope of the project. Porting data from EDX to Moodle. Porting of data from EDX to Moodle will be beneficial in the condition when these platforms, EDX and Moodle, will be hosted by the same institute university so as to synchronize their data and uh, get the data from one uh, platform to the another. Then EDX distributed platform for course synchronization. Uh, this is the second one. Uh, host university can you choose which courses to offer from the available list of uh, courses on its EDX so that the uh, child universities can adapt that and transfer it to other institutes which are uh, getting access to the courses. Then participating university can choose which courses to commit from the list of offered courses. Automatic manual course updates are provided to the participate, participating universities in this case. Then porting data from EDX to Moodle. Actually, we have a video demonstration for this. So uh, the first is the user data, how it is uh, uh, transferred and uh, data is ported from EDX to Moodle. So let's begin with it. So this is the EDX platform. Here the registration link is clicked. Then uh, email, password, public username, and full name. These are the least required fields in EDX you have to fill at, so as to register as a student. So here email is filled, uh, mohitsharma.14 at the rate gmail.com, then password, then public username Mohit, and then full name, Mohit Sharma. Then uh, we agree to the term services on a code and then create my EDX course. So in EDX, now the course is created, uh, this user is created. Is there no validation email? Actually, sir, there is. Uh, sir, actually, if a EDX user is created, then there is validation email in that. Correct. That will be sent. Surely it will be sent. So how were you able to log in without validating the email account? No sir, actually the account is created only. Not validation is done. When the account is created in the EDX, it has to be validated. And the and same... after that you can log in, correct? Yes sir. Uh, so that is, that is the case in? of EDX. But we are here uh, transferring the data from EDX to Moodle. So uh, when you I... You just showed the registration, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you immediately logged in. How is that possible? No sir, we have not logged in yet. Achha. Okay. Yeah. So, so uh, when that link is clicked, so the uh, in the Moodle automatically a user is generated. This is the admin account here. That Mohit Sharma is reflected. Mohit Sharma dot fourteen at the rate gmail dot com. Sir, actually it will get clicked. Actually, we can also log in into that account because having the admin access, we have inserted the user data in the Moodle table. 
then username is entered as Mohit that was there for the uh, login in Moodle and then password uh, the password that can has he has received from the mail he can input there and then log in there and then this is the account of his Mohit Sharma and all the courses are shared are so sir then the user is created in Moodle and that we can log in now the basic course, course information which uh, the Rajashi will be taking on basically you are taking triggers correct yes, sir. yes. go back to the, that slide only the basic course information that means any time a course is created in Moodle in EDX, EDX. EDX. okay it will go into Moodle, Moodle. What happens if the Moodle has the same name, course? It will not be added. Please Sir, we are matching it with, it should have the same course ID. Course so ID? Course oh. name can be same. Sir, course ID? Yes, sir, we are matching it with course ID. Fine, I am not too sure about that. Course section means what? Sir, in EDX there is a hierarchy. In uh, When you create a outline, an outline in EDX, Sir, first you create a section, then you create a subsection. Okay, ah, you are you are talking about those sections. Yes. Okay. When I create sections of my EDX course. Yes. Okay. You are making corresponding changes in Moodle. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, in Moodle it uh, uh, follows the nomenclature of topics. Whenever a section table is. you are matched yes. and you have done that. Yes. Okay. File. Sir, in file we have transferred PDFs only. Sir, in uh, when in uh, a PDF is uploaded in EDX. That will automatically get transferred to Moodle instantly. Okay. Question. And uh, I was talking about that hierarchy, section, subsection, and unit. Inside a an unit, a user can create a question. So all, all these data you have ported. What data is not ported? So uh, these are the things that we have not ported yet. So the transfer of file was only for PDF format and uh, not for docs or Why? ODT or TXT. Why? Sir, because in MongoDB, every file is stored in a different way. So we were successful in whenever EDX uses MongoDB, first of all, Correct. for courseware content. So whenever a file is uploaded, it is broken into chunks. And those chunks are stored in MongoDB. EDX combines those chunks and shows it on EDX. So we have to combine those chunks to get that file. And then we have to transfer it to Moodle. Why? Sir, we have to get that file, that original file. Yeah, but why Why don't you use the trigger when the file is uploaded in the first place? Sir, but that is the MongoDB wrong way. MongoDB doesn't create any files. Sir, suppose the file doesn't get uploaded. Any, suppose a failure. How does it get into the MongoDB? Sir, you are saying, sir, we won't get the file in between. Sir, that is a hackish MongoDB, way. MongoDB, you are saying, stores every file in its own format. Yes. Alright, yes. but that file has to be first given by the user through some software to MongoDB. Yes. You have already demonstrated that you can, when I click a button, you can take action. Yes. So when that user clicks a button to upload PDF file, image file, any idiotic kind of file, why can't you process that particular thing and insert the file in Moodle? Sir, but that file can be anywhere. I don't care. The update code of EDX, yes. EDX Studio. Okay, where a teacher is uploading anything, it can be an image, it can be anything, it can be a sound file for, for example. Okay, it's a file, yes, collection sir. sequence of data. Why don't you collect that sequence of data and give it to Moodle and also give it to uh, Mongo? That is the correct place you have to insert, no? Sir, EDX is automatically inserting in MongoDB. You have changed the user code. Yes, sir. The click button, click to register. Yes. So you have access to EDX code. Yes, sir. Correct. Yes, sir. Similarly, there will be a button on Studio. Sir, my trigger is on the function. The suppose you upload a file on EDX. Are Baba, upload of a file. There should be a front end and a button, no? No, sir. It, my trigger is not on that button. What? Sir, his trigger was on that button. So your trigger should have been on the button. That's what I'm saying. Sir, the function gets executed in uh, the. No, I don't care what gets executed. If he has demonstrated that he can put a trigger on a button, same technique you should have used. Sir, then if why, you, why are you doing a database to database transfer? Sir, then suppose you don't upload a file and go and just click that button. Sir, the trigger will be fired for no purpose. Or. Are Sir, but trigger can be fired from anywhere. I don't understand. First of all, I don't care about triggers. Okay. I, tri I, I talk about events. Okay. There is an event that happens. The event that happens is there is a click. I user registration you are transferring some data 
the event upload file. Why are you not transferring data at that time? Why a different technique? A technique which says that I have to struggle to do PDF, I have to struggle to do everything. Sir, and again the user which I, will I be... I don't care, it's a form. It's a form, a part of the form is a file name. Okay. When I say submit or I do anything, the form gets to some software. Yes. And that software contains the file name. It uploads the file name, cuts it into 100 pieces and stores it in Mongo. I don't care what it does in Mongo. Why the same thing is not inserted in Moodle? Sir, then we have to fetch the file from the user, whichever user is uploading from its directory into ADX. Then we have to provide access to that user also, to that user's folder. So that is a security problem also. That, that, that will be the requirement, the final thing, if we do it. Okay. Sir, I have videos for all these points. Sir, these are the problems faced. PDF file size and uh, for uh, Moodle uh, has a nomenclature for storing files which was not documented properly on Moodle, Moodle Docs. Um, so basically since the team size of our group is large, um, the project was divided into two uh, tracks. The first track was explained and the second track we did was um, introduction to uh, it's an EDH distributed platform for course synchronization. Um, I'll just give you an overview of what uh, the functionality of this is. Basically, there are two categories of users. Um, the situation for which we've created this is we have IIT Bombay as the host university, which is offering uh, MOOCs to other universities that choose to participate. Um, so over here, you can see on the left-hand side is the admin panel, and on the right-hand side is the university panel. For the first category of user, we're considering it to be IIT B, or to be very specific, the administrator of the uh, MOOC courses for IIT Bombay. You can see the panel over here is um, um, the responsibilities for the admin is allowing which, you know, choosing which universities can register to IIT Bombay courses, removing those universities, which courses to be offered and which courses to be unoffered. So that is the functionality of the admin panel we have allowed. And the second, at the university end, the university can select which courses to commit to, which courses to uncommit from, and uh, also allows for an updation. In case uh, IIT Bombay uh, chooses to update the content of a particular course, the same update will be reflected back in the university end, at the university's EDX. Um, so you can see over here that uh, if the university chooses to commit to a course, uh, we're using um, MongoDB commands to take a dump, uh, that's the BSIN dump you can see in the center, and that is exported in the EDX of the remote university. And for this, uh, for the update part, we are using periodic updates using DJ Celery, which is basically used for scheduling. In um, our um, creation of this, we have two types of updates. One is uh, the automatic update, which the admin can specify at uh, which instance of time it has to be taken. And second is manual update, which is provided at the university interface end. So if the admin of that particular university chooses to update a particular course, we have functionality for that. And the details will be explained by uh, Harshan Divyanshu. Now, I'll show you a quick demo of the entire project. So this is the main IITB server. So when we log into it, this is the LMS part. It can show the uh, courses available with the IITB. And this is the CMS part of the host server. Now I sign in into the IITB host server and create a new course. I name it Introduction to R Programming. Now as you can see the new course is created. Now I will add a new section to it. A subsection. In a video. Uh, now we have a basic structure of a course with the host server. Now this is the, the course you can see has appeared here in the host server, introduction to our programming. If I make changes to it in the back end, it will reflect in the front end also. Suppose I add a course pick to it. You have made it onto IITB server. Yes, sir. What are you doing now? Now, sir, we will log into RCMS that we have created. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. That no, is finished. Uh -huh. 
Now, sir, you can see all the courses that are being offered by the host server. Uh, yeah, but I don't see R. Sir, it is there. I is there. Third last introduction, introduction to R programming. Now, uh, we'll go to the another PC that is the user for it. You can see the username has changed at the top. Now, initially there are no courses here because IITB has not offered any courses yet. Now, I'll click on the course introduction to R programming and offer it. Now in the user part, he'll refresh the page and you can see the course is included here because the server has offered it. Now this is the internal course structure of the user interface. Now you can see that introduction to our programming course is not here. Now the user will click on the course and commit to it. Now the entire course data is transferred and you can see uh, it in the course opted for column. Now when he when the user refreshes, you can see there is the course introduction to our programming here. Now you can click on the course and you can see the section and the subsections are here plus the video that I have uploaded in the lecture one All is right. also okay. here. What about updates? Updates I will uh, next. Okay. Now suppose I create more subsections, what? lecture two. So I have changed the course in the main IITB server. Now I'll go to the user part and this is the update button you can see here. This green update section. When you uh -huh. click on the update button, the course in the local university server also gets updated. Now sir, when you go to the, you can see the so sections have. not working. Sir, this is working perfectly fine. I can show you anytime. Maybe this is not working. Sir, this is working. Sir, sir, not the, working. The, the maybe is not the scenario here. Uh, next one was to implement a queuing system for automatic updates. We don't need to integrate some other tool in EDX actually uh, because that would be a problem. So we uh, needed to implement something that was present uh, in EDX only. So we needed to configure the uh, salary tool which we use for the queuing system. Next was the updating courseware with preservation of course data. The data which uh, any change they make in their courseware uh, and after the, our updates uh, it should not change. And that's what was was the problem phase initially, and we covered it using the absurd command which we stated earlier. So the solution for the BS1 dump was uh, only dump using the course ID and the university ID from the main uh, host university, and then was transferred to the uh, other university. Next is we configured the salary build uh, salary beat inbuilt in EDX Django to implement the automatic queuing of the update task. And next was the absurd command which we use for the Updating the uh, courseware, and these are the references we use. 